All right, guys, we're on uh, with, with Morgan Rose. Welcome, Morgan. Look, can I get it out? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Morgan, if we met you at a dinner party, how would you introduce yourself? Um, I would say I'm a very crazy, fun, careless kind of person. Uh, 23 years old from Brisbane, born and raised, probably one of the most ochre and potty mouthed person, person you will ever meet. Um, I do a bit of handstands. I do a bit of social media stuff. That's pretty much it. I have a dog. Who's my world? <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say your occupation is? Hand balance. Honestly, media this person, is something I, <laughs> I struggle with so much. Like when I'm entering, cause I travel a lot. When I enter the country, it always says, what is your occupation? And I'm like, uh, like, do I write handstander, hand balancer? Do I write coach? Do I write social meet like a marketing person? Like, I don't know what my actual occupation name. Would I always be, change it. I just uh, brain scientist, strength coach, <laughs> doctor, like whatever. It's I should do that. I should yeah. definitely do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I just write handstander. I'm just a handstander. Do you think anyone's tracking it? Like they're just like, all right, oh, cool. last month she said hand sender. Now yeah, she's, exactly. she's a social yeah, she, media expert. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if they looked on my social media, they'd find that it's pretty accurate. So yeah. Okay, cool. If there's any fallouts, they, they know where they can go. <laughs> so Morgan could be a hand sander or a social media expert. We're not sure, but we'll move on Or a on brain that. surgeon. Yeah. A brain surgeon. Cool. Yeah. Uh, how did hand balancing start for you? Um, I quit gymnastics probably around five or six years ago. And from there, I just wanted to continue on with some skill work that I had built up from my gymnastics. And the only thing that I could really work on without having to use a mat or, you know, to sort of be chucking things that I hadn't done in a while was handstands. And it was something that was really fun for me to do at the time. And I had been obsessed with Cirque du Soleil artists since day one, like since the whole circus thing started. Um, so there were a lot of people for me to look up to in that sense. So I just started playing around with it and really trying to teach myself new things regarding handstands. And then I was just like, wow, this is my thing. Like I can do this. Let's keep going. Well, you, it looks like you've mastered it. I, that's really, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm having a mind blank here, but a guy came to my gym and he knew you pretty well. I think the Perth crew like yeah, yeah. The per- honestly, well. Perth is the best place in Australia for handstand community. They have the best hand balances in the world in Perth. Yeah, which is wild. Which is my, my it's so town. good. Like it's so crazy. Yeah, they're all super like, nice. Yeah. It's a holistic movement. Um, that's the main one that I'm thinking of. Maybe he's just yeah. the most wild on social media. Yeah, <laughs> he is. <laughs> so I put some questions out to my community yesterday and I was like, cool, I'm doing a podcast with Morgan. What should we ask her? And this one came up a lot. And it's, what is your biggest why? Oh, my gosh. I, I know, I'm throwing a huge one out there. Yeah. I mean, I love it. But at the end of the day everything that I do, whether it be work or whether it be physical, it's just to get the most out of my life. I want to have a very fun, fulfilling lifestyle and I want it to be a fucking long time. I don't want to be dying early. So I'm just expanding my time here on earth, I guess. And it's just making the most out of each day. I don't want to be, you know, I would rather earn less money and have a better lifestyle than to earn more money and have a shit lifestyle. So I'm all about like, the level of what my actual days are worth to me and how long I can live for by being as healthy as I can and be able to move the way I do and stuff like that. But longevity for yourself or longevity so you can help others as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, by, by doing it for myself, I find that I'm doing it for others as well. It's sort of something that comes naturally, especially through social media and stuff. It's like what I do day in, day out motivates other people to do the same. It sort of teaches them that, you know, life's so much more than just, what you're earning and where you live and this and that it's about actually living every year that you have to live because shit life's like you know you don't get a second one it's it's so it sounds like that ethos or why would come from maybe making the mistakes have you worked heaps in the past and not had a good life is that 
Um, yeah, I mean, I had a I had a period of time where I was working two part time jobs. I was studying at uni full time. I was living by myself, like living check to check, literally borrowing money off my parents every second, third week. And it was something that I was like, yeah, if I just push through, you know, I'm going to have a great job and it'll be good. And then opportunities came my way where I really did have to say no to a lot of certain things that could have made my lifestyle easier with like rent and all that sort of stuff. But I chose to sort of take that hard road and it's really paid off for me. And now I, I mean, along that way, I sort of learned to understand that the things in my life that really do make me happy have nothing to do with what I'm doing career wise and nothing to do with like anything that's, you know, materialistic in any way. It's always the people I'm with, the time, like the company I have sort of what I'm doing, whether it's something that sort of fills my soul kind of thing. Um, but yeah, what fills there's, yourself? there's oh, adventure. I'm an adventurous adventure. person. Okay, anything, cool. so this... being out in nature, Going Lockdown outside, situation is killing you. It it kills me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we don't have it now, so we're, Queensland's pretty good. But yeah, I'm just instead of traveling the world, I'm now traveling my state, <laughs> which is great too. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean Queensland's gorgeous. So, so obviously you're very dedicated to your physical practice. Um, what mm-hmm. motivates you to train? Uh, having the ability to do any type of movement like just the feeling that it gives me being able to do anything there's uh, there hasn't really been a sport or anything that I haven't tried that I've been like okay if I dedicated my time to this I could do it and I could do it well um I love the satisfaction it gives me when you know you you finish you got the endorphins running and you're just sort of like shit that was a good time like you never you never go back on a workout or a movement style or whatever you never look back and go oh that was horrible I'm never doing that again um, so it's definitely just how it makes me feel, how it, how I can move with that, how my body functions. Um, everything that my body can do is a result of all the different types of training I do. Inspirational. Thank you. So before we jumped on, we were talking about what you were doing this morning. Um, and I yes. think looking at someone like mega influencer status, like where you're at, you'd be like, all right, cool. What does a chick actually do all day besides yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. could you talk us through what a typical day for you would look like? Yeah, definitely. I'd be interested. I'm like, does she just sit on her phone and do an Instagram or Honestly, have a life? I mean, yeah. So, I mean, typically my day, my weeks are a little bit crazy because sometimes I'll have, we met, me and my videographer make a lot of plans to do stuff, to film and to train and to do all these sort of things. So on a typical day, other than those days, I would wake up, I wake up at 6 a.m. every morning. That's just something I do. Um, I call my boyfriend straight away because he lives over in America and that's his midday. So we sort of chat in the morning then. Um, I'll take my dog for a walk. So anywhere between like a five to 10 K walk with her. Um, She's a lab. So she holds a little bit of weight. So we're on a strict schedule. He's not, she's not. This is the thing. I walk her so often and she's still like in the overweight category. So we're I have just, a we're while, I walk him like 500 meters and he's like, nah, I'm out. Stop yeah, I mean, she's fit. She can last the whole way. It's just, she just holds weight and I mm. don't feed her anything. It's just, it's just a long story. Anyway, we walk every morning. Um, and then usually she'll have a swim as well. Cause we live on the water. So I'll let her go for a swim before we come home. Um, once I get home, I'll usually have a shower, eat some food, um, either go to the gym. Uh, yesterday I did a boxing class um, I've been getting back into my swimming. So I go down to my local lap, like local pool, do some laps. So this is, I mean, it changes every day, but I intuitively train. So if I wake up and I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm really tired from yesterday's weight session. I might go do a couple of laps at the pool. That's what my physical activity is going to be for that day. Um, once I've done that, I'll sort of come back to a little bit of work. I do a lot of organizing cause I manage all of my stuff myself. I don't have, um, you know, managers or, companies that are putting agencies and stuff like that so I sit down do emails um, set out my week and what I have to do that day or whatever um, have some lunch and then probably do social media stuff for a bit so just commenting back to people it's actually crazy you know how much time that takes <laughs> I can imagine. Um, yeah so responding back to messages I mean I, I cut myself off at maybe an hour try and do like an hour of that and then I'll do something and I'll have to you know, get my headspace out of my phone. Um, I usually 
try to post every morning as well when I get up. So it's sort of like something where I'll post whatever it is that I wanted to post that day. I'll take stories throughout the day. Um, but in that hour that I do come back or two hours, sometimes that I come back to my phone to comment back to people and engage with people. That's usually based off what I've posted that morning or what people have sent me throughout the day, whether they want advice with their handstands or all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I will usually come afternoon. I be, I've been trying to do all my handstand training in that time. So doing some handstands, I usually go out in the backyard in the sunshine um, do it out there just because it makes me feel a lot better than obviously being inside or being under the, um, undercover doing it. So I'll go out in the yard, do some handstands, do some flips and stuff, film some content as well with that. Cause a lot of the time, and this is something I absolutely love is that everything I post on social media is just a result of what I've done that day. I don't usually go out of my way to get content unless it's something that I'm doing in collaboration with a company or something that's actually business based. The majority of my content is just me going, oh, I should film this and post it tomorrow. Um, so I'll film stuff like that, come back home, um, again, do some work if I need to. A lot of the times that's um, when my boyfriend's gone to bed, so I'll call him and then we sort of, we've been talking about a lot of things. We have some businesses coming up, so been on phone calls with a um, couple of people within that and just doing that work, have dinner go to bed and I go to bed at like 7 30 8 o'clock every night <laughs> I'm not a late person I feel better because I wake oh, up because I wake up at like 6 a.m I'm like I and I can't sleep in like this morning I slept in till 7 and I felt like the laziest person in the world because I went to bed at like 11 last night I had so many things that I was doing and I got home late because I went to the movies with my mom but I seriously like I got home at like 11 or 12 and I was honestly out of it like I was zonked out I couldn't even drive home with my eyes open like it was it was bad and then when I got to bed I just was straight out of it but then I didn't wake up till seven and I wake up and I'm like oh shit like I'm, I'm so late like it's, it's an hour behind what I'm used to but um yeah the whole drive like with your it. eyes closed that is a skill <laughs> <laughs> no it was sort of like this is no. like yeah okay yeah no, hand balancer <laughs> and magician yes exactly <laughs> But yeah, so oh. I mean, it's it's a lot of so big work. days. It's a lot of time on my phone, but yeah. yeah, I do prioritize my movement because if I don't get up and go for a walk or do something that day, I literally am on computer screens or phones majority of the day, and it just does my head in. Super interesting to hear that the content strategy is authentic. That you just that's what you do, which is nice. Mm. Mm. I thought yeah. it would be like I very mean, planned. Like someone's like six uh, weeks in advance, you're doing this, 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 and this. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do have it with certain companies if companies want that stuff, but majority of companies, if they contact me and they're like, hey, we want you to post this at this day, I'd be like, uh, yeah, get fucked. I'm not good. Like, yeah. I, I'm uh, not. Nah. Like, if someone's trying to, you know, change my schedule, I'll, I'm more than happy to post and work with companies, but if they're sort of telling me what to do, that's when I sort of take a step back and I said, that's not authentic. Like, yeah. author like authenticity comes from it being my profile, me choosing what I do with it, me choosing what I post, what I say, what I promote, like all that sort of stuff. So that needs to come through by, again, everyday activities and everyday things. And you guys are just a very minor part of like pushing a product with that. Yep. I like it. So I had another question from a client actually, Mon. She was like, mm -hmm. why did Morgan choose Gymshark uh, to work yeah. with when she has so many options? And I was like, cool. yeah. yeah, I never thought of that. I'll ask her I that. love <laughs> this question. No one's ever asked me this. So well, it wasn't me. I I'd like to claim it. <laughs> yeah, no, I like kudos to her um, or him. What happened was that I actually had meetings with two other companies before Gymshark. So I sat down in Brisbane and I had two other meetings and I'm not going to name them because I was previously working with Lorna Jane. They were great. Um, but it just wasn't getting me anywhere. It wasn't giving me anything in return. They would just give me product and I would promote it. And I got them great sales and I did a lot of great things for them, but I never got anything in return. So it was clearly a one-way street um, mm. sort of thing. Um, and that's not against them at all. That was just how they were going with marketing at the time. And then, so I stopped that and I had two meetings with two companies. Again, not knowing, not going to name them, but within the first five minutes of both, interviews with these companies they were bagging out other companies Ooh. and I was like oh I, I I went to sit down and I was like this is not okay like we are here to talk about our partnership and you're talking about 
a third party. I was just like, this is so I haven't done that research on you. So, oh, honestly, <laughs> I, I was that. just like, I literally sat there and I was like, you guys have no idea how bad like this is right now. Like you, I don't care what you guys offer me right now. I'm not taking it. I don't want to be a part of that. Um, so I palmed those, both of them off. Um, and Gymshark actually contacted me two weeks after that. And cause I, they had been sending me stuff previously, just products to trial out and see if I like the brand. And they, the way they handled it, firstly, they had an Australian manager who I knew through mutual friends. She's actually my age. She went to school in Brisbane where I went to, but now she lives in the UK working for Gymshark. So that was a big thing for me because I was like, I can relate to her on some level. It's not just some money hungry owner trying to get product out of me kind of thing, get content. Um, they, The way that they spoke to me was the biggest thing and the way that they sort of gave everything, like put everything on the table that this is what we want to offer you. Um, and this is what we will try and push for you. And this is what we will do for you. Um, in return, we just expect this. And I was like, okay. And my first six months of being with Gymshark wasn't paid at all. So that was a big thing for me because I had just been offered and I just turned down the offers of, it was good money for these other companies. Um, and I literally chose Gymshark with no money coming back at all for six months over these companies that talk shit about other companies. Yeah. So it was all because Gymshark turned around and they said, look, we want to help you grow because ultimately that helps us grow. We're here for long-term partnerships, top partnerships. We're not here for six, 12 month partnerships. We want you on if it fits for the rest of your life. Like it was sort of something that they were like, we can't guarantee that, but you know, we want to do a three year contract. We want to do a four year contract. Like we want you on long-term because we want to put just as much effort and time into you as a person and a brand. And, as an athlete, as you will put back into us. And I was like, shit, these guys know their stuff. Like they're actually going to, you know, help me get what I want to do. And then it also was something where when it came to deliverables, which is what a content creator or influencer or whatever will have to put forward for the company, Gymshark was just, they literally said, do what you do. They said, we do not want to change anything because you are so special in the sense of what you do and how authentic you are. He said, do what you do, just wear our clothes. And I was like, shit, like I literally wear activewear every single day of my life. This is going to be the easiest partnership. And then since then on, it's just been so, so easy. Like it's just been no, not easy in a sense, but it's been so fitted. Like it, I, it didn't even need forcing. It literally just like molded into something that worked. So I was like, I want that to happen with every partnership that I have now on. And if it doesn't work like that, then I don't want it. So how to pitch an influencer 101 is do your research on them, make it authentic yes, to no, them, make it about 100%. them and make it easy for them. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. Like if you're coming to, you know, someone and you're just throwing money in their face, clearly that didn't work for me because these companies are throwing money in my face and bagging out of the company saying, you know, we, we did this first and then they copied and I was just like, shut the fuck up. I do not care. You know, like, I don't want to hear that. That's the last thing I want to hear. And then you've got a company that's like, hey, we want to help you grow just as much as you want to help us grow kind of thing. I was like, oh, this is actually a partnership. This isn't a one-way street. This is like they're actually going to share my content and get people moving in the way that I move. Like, And that Gymshark's done such a good job of that. They've shared so much of my content that people have been like, wow, like she's an athlete. Like I want to train like her. Then they come to my page. Then they watch my YouTube videos and then they're doing handstands in no time. And it's just like, it's like this constant circle. And I never had that with any other company before Jim Sharp. Cool. So it goes both ways. So switching gear a little yeah. bit, um, we're going to go to handstands. What do you wish you know when you first started out doing handstands? Um, uh, this is, I mean, I think for me, when I started out doing handstands, the best part about it was that one, I didn't know that it was going to go anywhere in regards to my life. Like when I started handstands, I was literally just doing it for the sake of doing it. And now it's like a job for me, which is crazy in my mind. But I think that's a good thing. So I don't think I would want to know that when I started out. Um, but I do think that I, I 
wish I told myself when I started out to do more participating in workshops and stuff. Cause that's, I do it so much now because I have the ability to, and because I have the money, it is quite an expensive thing. Like going to workshops and stuff is expensive. Um, but for the past couple of years, I've put at least like 10 to 15% of my income back into training and getting coached by some of the best in the world. But I wish I sort of knew how important that was at the very start of my training. Cause at the start of my training, I was just sort of playing around and doing my thing and, you know, doing what I knew and trying to teach myself like self teaching myself. And I didn't prioritize being a student as much as I did just being my own student. So I was like, okay, when I did get to that point, I was like, this is a game changer. Why haven't I done this earlier? So always seek the white belt, white belt mentality. Definitely in anything that you do. Yeah. So investments, learn more and then get mentors on where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. definitely. So other than hand balancing fitness, is there anything you're curious about at the moment? Uh, not really. I'm in the process with my boyfriend of um, getting a block of land and building and my mum's an interior designer and that's something I've always wanted to do. This is super random, but um just really get into the designing and sort of that whole aspect of building a house, um, setting it up, like doing all the, I guess, architecture stuff, really trying to set it out exactly how we want it and then designing it as well. It's something that I've just grown up with so much that I love, I love designing rooms and I love putting them together and doing that sort of stuff. So that's sort of something that I wanted to do. I'm, I don't know, like maybe a YouTube series or something. It'll be in America. Uh, mm. when I move over there, but it's, I mean, it is in the process now. We're sort of trying to get through as much as we can while I'm over here. And then when I move, it'll be a cool go. What state is it? California or you know? Utah? Utah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Utah's beautiful. It's such a good yeah. state. I used to live in Arizona. So a little bit. Oh, really? Very similar. Yeah. Steve so. actually used to live in Scottsdale in Arizona and he said it was beautiful. Arizona's, I feel like it's so similar to Utah. Yeah, Wild West it is absolutely yes. wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I worked at the University That's of Arizona so cool. as a strength coach for a while. Uh, that was very That's amazing. That's yeah, so it was, cool. It was definitely a fun time. Um, but America, yeah. Yeah, I've got many fond memories. Learned, learned my craft there, I would say. I've got a lot of things to be grateful for America about. Um, I, I love that place. I love the people as well. Yeah, so, I agree. If you were to turn back to when you were 18 years old, I have no idea how old you are right now. So this could be like... I'm 23. Weird. Okay, cool. So it's five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> uh, I did a thorough research on you, but I did not find out your age. But anyway, if you could no, turn back fine. to when you were 18, um, what would you tell yourself uh, in terms of life? Yeah, honestly, um, just to sort of, and this is so cliche, but to follow my dreams in a sense of what I'm a very, I, I'm one of those people and I find that you have those, like there's always these people within life. I'm one of those people that if I want to make it happen, I'll make it happen. Like it's, it's just a thing for me. If I want to, I work so freaking hard to make it happen. But at 18, I didn't know what I was doing. I was still at uni. I was sort of still trying to branch out into so many different things to try and make something happen that I knew was going to be stable for the future. And instead of thinking about stability and, you know, thinking about, okay, I'll be settled and I'll be earning a good amount of money then I can provide for my family and whatever. I wish I thought the same way I did when I changed my mind about uni and when I changed my mind about what I wanted to do and where, what path I was going to take, where I sort of just went all out on a whim. And I was like, again, don't care how much money I'm making this year, but all the next year, all the year to come, but my lifestyle is great. So I think just, trusting myself in knowing that whatever it is that I want to do, I can get to it. So not falling into that sort of net, that safety net and just pushing myself to the point where I'm like, I'm going to be good at this or I'm going to be successful at this because it's what I want. And it's because what I am pushing for and, and working so hard for. So Morgan chasing the dream. Exactly. I like it. Cool. So one of our last questions here, if you could have a meal with any three people dead or alive, who would it be for a health and fitness I podcast? Am. I hope this meal is healthy. Honestly, I, okay. So the first one would be my friend Yog. So I had a friend that um, was very close to me. He passed away. He was um, probably the most influential person within fitness on my life. 
life because he sort of got my mind thinking into calisthenics, body weight training kind of things. And he was very spiritual as well in a sense. So it would be, I don't, it would just be great to sit down with him, a friend that I've missed dearly since he's passed, but also someone who had such a big influence on my life when I was 18, 19, going through that transitional phase. So it'd be cool sort of sitting down talking with him about where I'm at now and what, you know, what he thinks of it all and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, second person, and I spoke to my girlfriend about this last night, I'm obsessed with true crime, obsessed with true <laughs> crime. Like my thing in my mind is that we really don't know what's going on in the world. And when you read true crime, you really come to understand what's out there. And I would love to sit down with like a detective or a true crime, you know, someone like a psychologist that works with criminals or something like that, because that's just, <laughs> it just fascinates me. I my mind is like, this point. So what do you mean? Okay. We really don't know what's going on in the world. We really don't know what's going on in the world. Like you, I agree, but I just want to hear your point of view. (laughs) Okay. So this is, this is an example. Me and my girlfriend were going through a big national park in Sydney, not long ago. Well, it was long ago. Um, It was just after all the travel bans had opened back. I had finished and opened back up. So it was a couple months ago, but we were going through this place and it was absolutely beautiful. And the first thing that comes to my mind is we're driving through this national park. And I was like, this would be the perfect place for people to dump dead bodies. And I said, do you know, I said to her, I said, how many bodies do you reckon they've found in this place? And she goes, what? None, never. And I looked it up. And within the last year, there'd been like seven dead bodies found in this national park. The ones they've only found. And I was like, way more. yeah, the ones that found. And I was like, you thought there was zero. I knew that there would be something around here because it's just the world we live in. Like nothing is dandy. Nothing is easy not everything's so positive and not everything's so safe these days so and it uh, you know it has everything like there's so many different situations that come to come to life but um for example another thing my uncle when he was younger walked to this train station and saw this guy with a girl in his boot this is a real story by the way with this girl in his boot Anyway, he went, him and his friend went up to the van and actually got this girl out of the van as this guy tried to get out and like drive off and got the girl out. And my uncle threw a rock in his car. So anyway, later on, they found who this guy was because they found the mechanic that was fixing this guy's um, window that had been smashed by a rock. And he had been a criminal, a wanted murderer and like rapist of like 10 years that they couldn't find. And all of a sudden, like fate had just put him in that position. And he just, he caught a freaking criminal of 10 years that had been on the run doing all this shit and killed so many people. And it was down the road from where I live. Like, this is what I mean. Like I never would have thought that within my suburb of where I grew up, that that would have happened, but it does. And it does all the time and we never see it. So true crime really does put into like we only, you know, we only see the big stories, Madeline McCann, Daniel Morgan. We only see those big stories, but there's shit that happens every damn day. And it, it just drives me insane that, you know, it's, it happens so often and people are so la di da with their life. I'm a very cautious person, by the way. <laughs> yeah. My uh, sister's a detective. So she tells me all the wild shit that goes on. And uh, yeah, I'm like, how does this well, make the news? Well, I know set how me it's- up. Yeah, she's uh yeah, interesting stories, but I can't talk about them. <laughs> I probably yeah, shouldn't. Yeah, I'm know. sure. I'm sure. Isn't it like yeah? <laughs> um, yeah. So that would be my second, just because I, again, it fascinates me. All of the books that I read have have something to do with true crime or their you know fiction stuff. Um, and then my third would probably be. And I can't, I don't know exactly who I would want, but I would want to sit down with an Olympian. I just don't know who. I don't know who though. Why do you want to sit down with an Olympian? Because mindset. Mindset. Okay. What do you want to know about mindset? I want to know what they, what they feel like they had to give up to get to their point. Because everyone in that. Yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, what was the most detrimental to them 
that they had to give up not freedom not this or that but a lot of people like I know even for me like I was an Olympic level but I gave up so much and I went through so much that a lot of I I guess I was uh, I was a lot more resilient and the way that my genetics or I'm not even sure nothing mentally stuffed me up but every other girl I trained with has ended up with eating disorders, mental problems, like depression, like they've had a lot of things happen just because of the way we used to train. And I would like to know what Olympians have given up within their life or their youth or whatever that has impacted them the most into their future life and what they're doing now and stuff. So we run a, well, I run a Bali retreat and on New Year's Eve, we had an mm-hmm. Olympian come and talk um, for us. Ooh, um, Daniel that's so weird. Okay. Yeah. Firstly, your what is it? Your sister-in-law or your sister is detective. a detective? And it's then meant to be, Morgan. Olympian, it's meant like, to be. pretty much me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she came and talked uh, about, she came and talked about, um, she was a synchronized swimmer in the Olympics. Yes. For Australia. So super interesting story. Wow, yeah. Cam did some pool sessions with us and I suck at synchronized swimming. Uh, it's super hard. <laughs> Anyone that's going to try, I have mad respect for that. I see them dancing around in the water. I'm like, that is yeah. it. Well, then you do it and I'm sinking like a sack of shit. Is it just a, a whole heap of holding your breath? No, you're like literally, you got to like paddle underwater so hard to keep your like chest above the water. But if you're a dude and yeah. you got a, you got a bit going on and you're a bit away, like it's super hard to keep up. And then you got to do shit yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. as well. But I, the, honestly, I can't even float. I sink straight down. So I would suck. Mad respect for synchronized movements. But anyway, she gave uh, mm. speeches and stories about the whole Olympics thing. I could hook you up with that. That'd be interesting. So moving on, I've got a handstand yeah. specific question. Um, any tips for maintaining hand balancing while doing other training? So by other training, like strength training, Olympic lifting, general gym stuff, you know, sports. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say if you're going to do other training, you can incorporate push strength and you can incorporate grip strength because both of those will help you with your hand balancing stuff. That's just on the side. Um, If I was saying, like, if you are saying to add this into, I would say short intervals, short trainings, but very often. So 20 minutes a day at the end of your training, at the start of your training, whatever it is, 10 to 15, 20 minutes a day. Um, every day is going to be better than than doing a one hour session a week. So it's sort of like, you know, inching away at each each thing. I know I used to, when I had a massive stage of doing weight training, I would literally sit down at the end of my weight session, stretch for maybe five minutes, do 10 minutes of handstands. And that was it. I didn't even do anything else. Um, But I just did my basics and things that I knew were going to progress me in the way I wanted it, wanted it to. But strength wise, definitely push skills or push strength in general and grip strength work. So hanging up the bars, all that sort of stuff. So are you following a handstand program at the moment from one of your mentors or you write your own? Yes. Yeah. No, I have, I have one at the moment that I am following with my mentor. I actually had a bit of a wrist injury, so I haven't been doing it as often for the past two weeks. Um, but coming back into it now, which is super exciting. Um, but yeah, I do have, I do have a program now. I've only been doing this program for maybe like a month or two coming up to now um before that i always did my own programming so this is something that i was like cool i'm gonna try this give it a go and i've seen progress so far in it which is really nice but it's more about having someone to check into having someone to look at my stuff and see okay this is your problem because me watching myself there's only so much i can critique myself on without seeing what i'm used to seeing which is what i do yeah coaching is key so for me like when i'm snatching doing cleans doing squats and then trying to do handstands mm-hmm. as well just fucks me up like my, my yeah. shoulders my wrists everything just gets so jacked up so like even personally yeah. for me it's super tough i try to keep it super intense but yeah it's it's very hard to balance both yeah 100 percent. and i think honestly it's not even about for you if when we're talking about this if you're doing all of this stuff and it's really hard and it's high pressure and you know it's it's actually your lack of flexibility. It's got nothing to do with the mm-hmm. handstand itself because you would have the strength to do the handstand, but your lack of flexibility makes your handstand super hard to get into the right position for it to feel easy. So it's sort of like if you are if you don't even do handstands, but you're working on your strength and your mobility, you're going to end up having your handstands at a point that are going to be comfortable someday. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a flexibility a thing. And uh, work on my back. Break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Morgan, uh, just closing out, what is a uh, number one question I haven't asked you that I should have asked you? Uh, am I happy? Are you happy? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> duh. Um, Look at me. No, I just I I find that um, a lot of the time people are so caught up, and this is something I've learned just by the people that I've worked with, Exalto. I love those guys. They're so happy in what they're doing. They're not thinking about dominating the world. They're thinking about helping each individual pe person out that will eventually dominate the world. You know, like they're thinking about the short term thing that's going to turn into a big term thing. Um, but they are happy in what they're doing. And I find that a lot of people aren't happy in what they're doing. It's exactly what I was saying before. My switch in my mind from uni and part-time jobs was about being happy every single day, waking up and loving what I do and being able to push myself because I want to, not because I have to. It's a thing of, yeah, it's everything. It's a whole mindset change. And it's not about, you know, that end goal of happiness or whatever. It's about just enjoying your time through the whole process of whatever it is that you're going through. So in summary from this podcast is get your shit together in your head and be happy mindset. Yep. We've talked like health yep. and fitness podcast has just gone full mindset. Woo -woo. I like it. Honestly, though, it's so much something woo. that like a hundred percent, like if you don't have a good mindset, it doesn't matter what you do, fitness, anything, it's, it's not going to work. It's, it's going to be a struggle. It's been great. Morgan, how do, how do people find you? Um, you guys can email me at my emails, info at morganrosemarini.com or you guys can hook me up on Instagram or YouTube. Um, do you reply to everyone them on email? Just Morgan Rose Marini. Everyone on email. Nice. OCD with my email. If I have an unread email, it's not a good day. I listened to a podcast last week and the guy was like, DM me. I reply to everyone and he didn't DM me back. So I was like, you're lying, mate. No, I mean, I, I can't promise I'll reply in DMs just because I have, <laughs> nah, honestly, be, thousands of my requests. But I do go through and sit there and go through every unread message and make sure that I try and get through them. But it's a long process. I feel like I've, I've, I was behind maybe like two years ago and now it's just going more and more behind. But I'm working. <laughs> Thanks for jumping on, guys. It's been great chat with Morgan. Yes, thank you so much for having me.